Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did for his. I am going to uh, try not to rush it like I had the habit of doing in the past. Because turns out, I need to explain more of a connection for my creations. Because that would help me with views. And I hope this video would turn all of this sequencing around and such. So for this video, I'm going to introduce three characters, three data sheets, and two things on my Levitt's paradigm that I tried to input in a live broadcast but didn't go as thoroughly as intended. So I have to reincorporate them just to spare them the trouble. I hope you guys have appreciated my creations and such. And I hope that I'm doing this correctly on behalf of my creations and on behalf of the chance of social recognition. The first one that I'll introduce is a character known as Panthra. And if you guys bear with me, I'll read it and try to make it work. Panthra. Real name? Kitty Pullman. Height, 950 feet at maximum. Weight, 97 tons. Status, anti-hero and queen of all cats. Anti-hero means hero and villain at the same time. Sometimes you do good, sometimes you do bad. Base, mobile, meaning she doesn't have a designated domain. She just travels. Intelligence, three and a half brains meaning she's slightly smarter than the average person. Behavior. Sneaky, flirtatious, and somewhat moody. She also has a few personality traits from as that of a common feline and such. Lethality. Extremely lethal. Even most dogs are scared of her. Weaknesses. She has a severe intolerance to water. These are her powers. She has immense size and strength, sharp claws on her hands and feet, acute senses, a long swatting tail, possesses two beating hearts, and has a strong healing factor. She has a second pair of backward knees that make her mostly stand on all fours, though it's never really been a concern for her. Eyes, yellow with vertical pupils, hair, grayish black and short. Origin. Katie Pullman was an agent who wished to be at the top of her game. She eventually got an injection from an unknown source that would give her the skills of a cat. However, Katie transformed into developing cat ears, a long cat tail, a second pair of backward knees, and a surprisingly colossal size. After outgrowing the warehouse that she was in, Kitty wrecked havoc havoc across the heart of Chicago, claiming to be the best there ever was. At one point, Kitty climbed the Sears Tower and tried to destroy the Blue Man Clan Sky Carrier that tried to stop her, but a plasma-powered shot, like from a plasma cannon, I believe, made her fall to the streets below and making her splatter on impact. But when she healed from almost nothing, the Blue Man Clan found that the plasma shot gave her severe amnesia, only remembering some basic details such as her name and her powers. Eventually, Kitty was persuaded by the Master, who is the leader of the Blue Man Clan, that she's in fact an anti-hero. After gaining the codename Panthra, Kitty would normally do what the Master would tell her. Costume, she simply wears a black latex jumpsuit. Team, solitary or with others. Order inspiration, DC Comics' Catwoman. 
and it just occurred to me to make this input due to some manifestations of sorts. I, uh, trying to think about, you know, I'm just, the reason why I have some giant monsters and giant heroes and villains and such is to show some form of, like, I'm helping my creation stand out compared to other universes and such. So I hope that's comprehensible for you guys. The next one is a villain for the hero native to the Alpha Earth known as Quantum. And Quantum is arguably the most iconic hero of the Alpha Earth, as far as I could recall. And here's the one for you. Happy one. Quanborg. Real name, inapplicable. Height, 9 feet 10 inches. Weight, 455 pounds. Status, villain, and servant of Olga. Olga is Quantum's trademark enemy, just so you guys know. Base, the Space Fortress, and Mobile. The Space Fortress is basically the head, the main layer for Olga, which is basically if the Alpha Earth was in the same positioning as the default Earth, the Space Fortress would be in the spacing zone as Mars is far away from Earth in terms to the positions between the two. Just to give you an idea. Intelligence, five brains and a plus, meaning she has cosmic level intelligence. Behavior, stubborn, menacing, and remorseless. She'll do anything to destroy quantum, no matter the cost. Lethality, as above. She's a literal threat to the public. Weaknesses, cosmic forces, being rivaled, and being torn apart. Every king has a rival to the throne, and every Achilles has its heel. Powers. She has most of the powers of quantum, along with the power to repair herself. She also has a special hatch on her chest that shows her quantumite heart, which can shoot a beam of quantumite energy. Quantumite is Quantum's main weakness. It's the one thing that could kill her, like legitimately. If you're exposed to Quantumite in any of its forms, you're either going to die from it, or you're going to get mutated by it. Eyes glowing red, hair platinum white in a short bob. Origin. One time, Olga decided to make another monster to destroy the heroic Quantum. After a time of building, Olga made a cyborg version of the Hyperion Survivor, which also had liquid quantumite for blood and a chunk of quantumite crystal for a heart. Naming her Quanborg, Olga commanded her new creation to decimate quantum. When she found that she couldn't really defeat her alone, Quantum decided to summon her imperfect counterpart, an anti-hero known as Quirk to help deal with the evil Quanborg, and thus destroying her in the process. Outraged of this, Olga restored Quanborg and allowed her to go solo, hoping that Quanborg would be more of a menace on Quantum's behalf in the future. Costume. She's designed with a metallic bodysuit. Teams. Solitary, with Olga and other villains. Order and Inspiration. DC's Cyborg Superman and Metallo, both of which are native to the DC Universe. You know, I just figured that Quantum, as far as I know, would be the Leviathan Inverse equivalent of Superman. And the Hyperions are basically the Leviathan Universe equivalent of the Kryptonians, just as an example. And I hope things are working out properly for you guys. I hope I'm do doing some level of satisfaction. You know? And I apologize if it's not the right visuals. I'm just trying to make things work. You know how it is. And this is a character that the name might be a bit confusing for you, but you know how it is with comics. This character, her name is spelled Ran, R-A-N, 
but it's actually pronounced Ron. And there's a reason for that. Ron. Real name? No. Length? 15 feet to 300 miles. Weight? 6 tons to unrevealed. Status? Antihero and daughter of Trident. Trident is simply the queen of the seven oceans of the Alpha Earth, and she's all the mother of all the Mermians that live on the Alpha Earth. And Mermians are basically mermaids and mermen, basically. And Trident is the sister of the Alpha Mer, which I mentioned previously in the podcast. They are sisters, and they are both daughters of the Ultra Mer, who is basically a world eater and the ancestor of all the Mermians on the two Earths and such. And uh, just heading back to Ron, because I don't want to seem out of place about it. Base, Alpha Earth, Mobile. Intelligence, three and a half brains. Behavior, innocent, protective, and somewhat moody. She'll do anything to protect the oceans of the Alpha Earth from any threat. Lethality. Only when angered or during a fight. Weaknesses. Being rivaled and water pollution. Powers. She could grow up to 300 miles long, can make water copies of herself, and has all Mermian-based capabilities. She also has access to a weapon known as the Drowning Net, which is capable of drowning and pulling down entire aircraft carriers. But she only uses it when it's necessary for her to do so. Eyes, light blue. Hair, light black and flowing. Origin. One time, Triton figured that it would be best to have her own daughter. And after a time of using her hermaphrodite skills, Triton spawned her new daughter, who she decided to name Ron. By adulthood, Ron wanted to protect the Seven Oceans from any form of corruption until finding that mankind was dumping oil and trash into the oceans, outraging her for the first time. After getting her drowning net from her mother Trident, Ron used her new weapon to drown all the ships until being prompted by Quantum to do otherwise. Since then, Ron would only use her drowning net when she truly needs to, in order to keep the oceans healthy and safe from external threats. Costume. She simply wears a blue waterproof top. Teams. Solitary, with Trident and others. Just so you know, Trident, in this character, is spelled T-R-Y-D-E-M-T. Original inspiration, Ron, from Norse Mythology. This character is inspired from a character that was native to Norse mythology, you know, like the Asgardians, as you could picture it. And Ron is basically inspired from a story sequencing that I've gotten from the mythology of such, you know? And, um, I'm almost done. I hope you guys are appreciating the sequencing so far. And I'm planning to make one more input. Just bear with me. The first one I wasn't able to input in time is a thing called Dragon Force, which I apologize, some data, some of my creations have more data than others. So bear with me, and I apologize in advance. The Phoenix Force in Marvel Comics is highly powerful, capable of affecting the well-being of the cosmos as a whole. The Dragon Force is the Leviathan Universe equivalent of the Phoenix Force, not to be confused with the rock band with the same name. So basically think of it as a dragon-shaped nebula of sorts that is capable of decimating entire solar systems and maybe even entire galaxies, depending on the circumstances. The other one that I'm going to introduce is a species of mythical organism 
not to be confused with the harpies, but are known as the harpoids, which are a bit different from harpies. Real name varied because it's a species. Height and weight varied. Status anti-hero, meaning sometimes they do good, sometimes they do bad. Their base is mobile, so they travel a lot. Intelligence depends on the individual. It's varied. Behavior, seductive and willful. Lethality, during a fight or craving. Weaknesses, explosives and stab wounds. Powers, they have harpy-based powers, which are a cross between human and bird-based powers. They have uncanny beauty, they travel in swarms, and they are capable of hypnosis through um, audio, like basically singing and such. Weapons, see left, which is what I just said. They have varied eye colors, and they normally have two eyes biologically, and their hair, color, form, length, and style is all varied depending on the individual. For costumes, they are always covered in a coat of purple scales. You know? Team, solitary, or swarm, species, mutation, beauty level above average, special features, genetic powers, and beauty, transportation, walking, and flying, occupation, legendary beauties and professional singers, friends, partners, enemies, not official, inspiration, the harpies. I hope you guys have um, appreciated all that I have introduced into here, and I hope I make made things work on you guys' behalf and on behalf of my creations and such. I hope I've been doing quite the progress and such, and um, if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below, it's your choice. And still thank you for all the 11 so far members alike of the viewers from the United Kingdom, thank you, I, I, that's the furthest that I've gone to date in terms of the reach of my, um, social recognition and such, so I thank you guys from the opposite side of the Atlantic Ocean in that particular zone. So yes, thank you. And, uh, hope you guys enjoy this footage, and, uh, hope you guys have a fine rest of the month, and for you guys who are still in school, I hope you guys have a decent education and such. And until next time, in transmission.